All right, let's get to the mail. First one's from yep. Chris Barnes, and stuff is working the fans. Hey, guys, I recently went to an indie show here in Australia. I couldn't help but notice during the intermission when the wrestlers were selling their merch that they were always trying to work the fans into spending more money. I was kind of how many times wrestlers were selling $40 worth of merch and when, a, when given a $50 note, said to the fans, I have no spare change. Do you want to grab another pick to round it up to 50 I never realized that wrestlers <laughs> use this time to sell merch and make themselves some extra money while it's on the road and thought good on them for doing it. Do you guys have any stories where you used to purposely work fans to make more money? Uh, Chris, from Chris and Gold Coast Australia. Not really. I was pretty fair with my, my merch prices. Like 20 bucks for autographs, $10 for taking a picture with me. You know, and I used to do some funny stuff. I'd, I'd put like a, um, what you call it? I'd, I'd put a thing that says like handshakes, five dollars, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I'd put like hugs, free, you know, free with handshake. Mm -hmm. you, you know, right. <laughs> so it's like yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, I, I, that yeah. Kind of, but I never, that kind I never worked the, the the people though. You know. Like yeah, that, that yeah. kind of story that he's describing there sounds like a rock and roll express, Tommy Rich. You know, right. Memphis kind of thing. But, yeah. Bro, well, let me tell you, almost all the underneath rest. Yeah, I never worked the fans like that either. If they gave me $20 and they needed change, I wouldn't say, oh, I don't have change. I'd get it from the wrestler besides me. But <clears throat> uh, uh, the bro, you know, let's face it, depending on who you are, if you aren't usually in the main event, you ain't getting much money. And sometimes even the main event guys don't get enough. A, a lot of money depending on who it is sometimes you make more money selling merchandise where mostly if you don't have a name you're selling your personality to fans if people right. like you they'll buy something even if they don't know who you are i've seen girls rubbing up on guys sexy poses you know and i was putting them over to get paid you know uh, right. i don't actually like doing signings a lot but when i do i do make good money yeah. Next one's from Theodore Roberts. He's the third man. Hey, fellas, long-time listener. I've emailed before and having, having a show where your questions and topics are commented on. It really does add a whole new dimension. It makes this well worth listening to. Long love the long live, love the mailbag. Uh, I jump on the ad-free version as soon as they drop on Patreon. Money well spent. I had some questions I want to ask you. After replacing KG, Joe's had a really cool run with this show. And honestly, I don't think there's a better fit for your third man. It was bumpy at first, but he really seems at ease now and knows exactly why and when to interject. The show as a whole has never flowed better than it has in 2023. Joe, how are you feeling about your work with K100 to this point? And also, will you ever return to Creative Control or the daily version you did for a while? Um, and and for Conan and Disco, when you hear things about, about Joe being on Bobby Fish's show, discussing specific topics with Chris Jericho or co-hosting with Raven, does it make you guys a little proud that you gave him his big-time start? <laughs> I know it's part of the show to, but you had to see, you had to, if you had to swear in court to tell the whole truth, what are your honest appraisals of Joe's progression through the years? There's got to be at least a, a little pride for your boy, uh, Theodore Roberts. Theodore um, Roberts. No, I know. I, I don't, I don't think Joe does a good job at all. <laughs> so, but I, Cody, what, what do you think? <clears throat> well, think what did he ask Joe first? He asked Joe a question. What yeah, was it? Uh, yeah, what am I, what am I progression? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I, th I think uh, I'm way more at ease. And I, I actually, I think I'm starting to talk a little too much, you know, but I think uh, I think the show's going great. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And as far as creative control, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. What about you, Conan? Why? Why even listen to creative control when you could take a Xanax? But anyways, right. uh, <laughs> look. <laughs> Yeah, and that's definitely a juxtaposition, which is a great yeah. word for Latino. Well, on a podcast doing a mailbag segment, nothing. It's a late night listen. <laughs> Let me tell you, bro, this is, I'll be as honest as I can here. I don't, I just worry about our show. I don't give what other show he goes on. Uh, he was kind of a snowflake and couldn't take criticism, but we're, we're major league, bro. If you're going to be around me and disco, especially at the same time, you just got to learn to take it. And I'm hard to work with because I have certain standards. Uh, plus, Joe suffered a little bit from the, uh, why, why aren't you guys always putting me over? Uh, well, because it's your <laughs> right. job KG, and you're getting KG, paid, dude. KG syndrome. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, to me, you weren't doing anything special because A, it's your job, and B, you're getting paid for it. You're not doing it free. Mm -hmm. uh, that he does other shows doesn't impress me, not being a, but I don't worry about our, our show. 
You know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, but he's done a great job getting us money, getting us ads. You know, he's more uh, uh, proactive than he used to be before I had to tell him to do. It. So that's mm -hmm. why I was always burying him. But uh, no, that's that's our boy. And, and I'm proud of Joe's growth. I don't give a fuck if he goes on Bobby Fish or Raven or <laughs> Jericho, just so you know. And the, the snowflake thing, I, I just real quick, I agree with. And I've said to you off the air and stuff, Conan, that I actually, I just finally just listened to you. And I just learned not you don't have to take every person's opinion personally and then try to argue with them and stuff like that. I still have my moments, but I definitely learned learned that from you. Next is from John Flynn. Yeah, but it's all good, bro. We're, 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 just so everybody knows, we're all boys. Yeah. Right. Subject is Edge and AEW so far. You guys were WCW and Bret Hart joined WCW. Does Edge join AEW remind you of that so far? It seems like he went from being a huge WWE superstar just a cooled off guy in three weeks that no one cares about in AEW. Hopefully he can turn around. That's from John. Um, like I said, he's only been there three weeks. I mean, it's not, you know, I, I'm definitely not going to like critique critique him thus far until he has like at least like four, four or five months in there you know what about you it, it's so weird to me because he almost feels out of place probably because i've seen him in wwe for 25 years and that's where i'm used to seeing him he just feels out of place you know right. maybe he, you know i'll get more used to it but i i have a feeling and i don't know why but that when he has like his last last match i think he'll have it there even if it's just one match yeah, I, I um, I think WWE. His, I mean, ever since he came back to WWE, which was one of the great Rumble surprises, I liked most of his stuff, a lot of his stuff. But if you think about it, when AEW fans would have a list of guys, can you imagine if they were in AEW? Punk, Brian, Cole, Joe, those guys. You never really heard AEW fans say, "Man, we we could really use Edge." I just don't know that that he's one of their guys that they really will support. You know, but I guess right. we'll find out. Well. Not only that, you're getting saturated with a lot of WWE talent, you know, mm -hmm. older talent too. Yeah. Yeah. So next was from Romo 22334. Subject is the Iron Claw movie. Uh, K Onda, K100 crew. I hope all is well. I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on the recent trailer released by A24 and the Von Eric family called The Iron Claw, which is over 7 million views on YouTube and will be released next month. Were you guys be heading to the theaters to check it out? Also, were you guys a fan of the movie, The Wrestler with Ricky Work? I know some people within the professional wrestling industry weren't too fond of it. Please keep up the great work and content as I look forward to the podcast every week. That's from Omar, the Mean Streets of Newark, California. Um, I, I like The Wrestler. I thought it was kind of, I, I didn't like the thing where they try to present like all the guys are crippled, like the older guys, like they kind of did. You know, that's not yeah. true. And the other guys, um, right. And, uh, I like I like the trailer for the for the Von Erich movie, so I'll, I'll probably end up seeing it, just because it's wrestling related and you know it's going to be um be good good to discuss. What about you? Well, the trailer looked great. Yeah, I I won't I won't go to the movies to see it, but once it's on HBO Max or Prime or Netflix like that, I will or probably ends up you know in, on an airplane and I travel a lot. But I liked when I was watching. You probably grew up also just like me, Disco. Did you used to watch World Class on ESPN? Uh, yes. So I, I grew up on that. You know what I'm saying? I used to love when you used to come out to that song by Rush, you know, Tom Sawyer. Yeah, Tom Tom Sawyer, Sawyer, right. Sawyer was a, yeah. The other one came out to um, Stranglehold. Stranglehold. Right? Yeah. 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 Just great songs that come out with when they didn't have any copyright laws. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I actually... I actually wrestled with two of the brothers. One was the one that's barefoot. I think that's Kevin. Kevin. I actually right. wrestled with him in Arena, Mexico. I don't know what he was doing in Mexico, but he kept telling me he was over in Israel, and I actually checked it out one day, and he was. For some reason, yeah. they were huge in Israel. Maybe they got yeah. more class back well, in the yeah. day. Bro, the religious channel. Yeah. Just, sorry, just an interject for quick. The religious channel, whatever it was back then, broadcast world, world class wrestling, and it played over there in Israel. So they went over there and did shows and stuff. Interesting. Yeah, right. they were they were a so, big show over there. Carrie, which I actually met when I was doing the Max Moon character, bro, he, you know, he was a legit track star, football star, you know, I, I think he, and anyways, but bro, he when I was looking at this um trailer, did you see the guy that was playing Terry Gordy? He looked just like yes. him. 
He did, right? And and even and yeah, all the brothers look like that. I like when the characters look like themselves a lot. Yeah, I can get into it more. But bro, Kerry, when I met him, he just looked like a star. He was built, super cool guy. He actually once told me, "It's good that you're here because we need Latino Texas. We need Latino talent in Texas. That there's a lot of Latinos." And he goes, "You got a great look, man." And we were. He was always cool with me, and I. Unlike the Ultimate Warrior, I always low key wanted Kerry to have Ultimate Warrior spot because one was cool and the other guy was. A... But anyways, um, uh, bro, I would I would love to see a movie disco on the Hart family and the Guerrero family. That would also be cool. Yeah. Did you Next see? Some... Uh, and this might not be news at all, but I didn't I didn't know it. Did you see MJF's playing Lance Von Eric? Did you know he was in it? No. Yeah, because yeah, one day I called them. Yeah, I, I asked him to be on the podcast, and he was like, oh, yeah, you got to go through the – I got to call them because I haven't done it. But now they have, like, some lady I think you got to talk to, and she's got to give you the okay if they yeah. can come to the show. And when I was talking to him, he was on the set of that move, that thing with the Von Erics. That's cool. All right, mm -hmm. next one's from Sean Mon Montorwalk. Subject is next a question. Hey guys, it's Greek. Uh, hey guys, it's Greek boy. Is it disrespectful to call a Mexican luchador a vanilla midget? Doesn't make any sense. They're the ones that started the lucha libre. If a white guy does it, they are vanilla midgets. Mexicans you do it because it's in their blood. Do you agree? P.S. Disco. The lyric to the song "Girl, I Want to Sex You Up" is "Make me feel real good, not feel so good." Mm. All right. Well, let's man, let's give this guy a yellow card for correcting me. All right. All right. Um, but I, that's the way I sing it. All right, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to call them vanilla midgets because they're they're you know they're Latinos. So, what do you think, Conan? I don't really understand the question, but first, vanilla midget was a term for white white guys that were smaller than, than mostly the cruiserweights and right. and lacked charisma. That's something Nash and Hall would throw around, but it, they weren't right. talking about Mexicans. Well, Eddie was one of the vanilla midgets, right? You know, yeah. So, but then it was Dean and Benoit. Yeah, but they, yeah. Well, yeah. that that was a term they used, right? Mm -hmm. 